you have an application you just want to deploy on AWS and maybe you want to package that as a container and you want to do that in a way that means you don't have to worry about managing infrastructure. You've heard all about this thing called serverless and you just want to get started and use it quickly. Well, in this video, it's going to be the first of a series of videos showing you how to build, deploy and operate event driven container based applications running on AWS applications running in a completely serverless way. And we're going to do that with a CLI provided by AWS called AWS Copilot. Let's jump straight into it. AWS Copilot is a CLI and set of toolings that sit as an abstraction on top of container-based applications on AWS. It makes it really easy for you to package, deploy, and operate your applications. And to get started, you simply need to install Copilot on your system. And you can do that from the pretty extensive documentation provided by AWS. I will put the link to this documentation page in the description below. And once you've got Copilot installed, you can just check everything is okay by running a Copilot dash help. And that will give you the list of all the commands that you have in Copilot. Excellent, we're ready to get started. Now, if I run to get started a copilot init command, this is gonna walk you through a short wizard to get started building applications on AWS. So I don't want to use an existing application, I want to create a brand new one, and I want to call this plant-based pizza YouTube demo. Within Copilot, there's this concept of an application. Think of an application much like a bounded context in domain-driven design. And within an application, you can have a set of services. And these services can be web applications, they can be background services, static sites, but everything sits within this container of an application. And you can see within an application, there's a different types of services that you can have. Request-driven web services, load balanced, back-end services, static sites, scheduled jobs. There's a whole range of different things. And to get started with this application, this is a monolithic API. You just want a load balanced web service. And I want to call this API. This is just the main API of the application. Once this is created, I can then enter a path to the Docker file, which I know is under source application plant based pizza.api slash Docker file. And let's go and have a quick look at the Docker file for a moment. If I open my IDE, this is a .NET application, a .NET web API. The application itself is largely irrelevant if you're following along. All you need is a Docker file that's going to give you a working application off the back of it. So here is the relatively straightforward Docker file for building and deploying a .NET application using .NET 7. Um, and we're outputting the actual compiled DLL as the entry point to the Docker file. Simple. Come back to my terminal now and you can just specify the path to your Docker file. If you had the Docker file in your root, Copilot will automatically find that because mine sits down the stack a little bit. It doesn't quite work that easily. And now you will get the feedback in your terminal as Copilot goes off and sets up a whole bunch of different IAM roles, S3 buckets. There's a whole range of different things that Copilot's going to do to get you started and ready to build. And you can see that happening on the screen now. This does take a couple of minutes to do this initial config, so I'll come back in just a moment and we can carry on. Okay, that's finished with the initial configuration now. And Copilot will then ask you if you want to deploy a test environment. If you would say yes here, Copilot will go off and kick off a deployment straight away. But actually, you don't want to do that. And I will show you why. Copilot is going to save a configuration file, a YAML file, to your local file system. And you can see that is written to the slash copilot slash API slash manifest.yaml. And if you go to your file system now, and I've already loaded this into my IDE, the magic of YouTube, I have this manifest file here. And this is where you can actually configure all the different bits and pieces of your container-based application. So this is a load balanced web service, remember? So it's going to take HTTP requests. Of course it is. So I've set up a custom health check here. My application has an actual health check endpoint on the slash health route. So we've set that up there. And then I've actually configured the Docker file. So initially the pre-built manifest just had 
that setup as, as, as described there. I've added this context section just to make sure that when my Docker image is building, the entire repo isn't copied into the Docker build context. I just want to use the things in the source folder. And then if we go further down, you can configure the memory, the CPU, what platform you want it to run on, how many tasks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's a whole bunch of different configuration options that are defined on the really extensive documentation in the link below. But this is, we just want to use the default. Like I said, all I've added is this additional health check endpoint and I've added this additional context property. This is all I've changed from the default that happens here. Now you might be wondering, that's great, but James, my application needs to talk to other AWS services. It doesn't exist in a vacuum. Well, you'll be happy to know that I have the same problem. This application also needs to talk to other resources, DynamoDB and SQS to be specific. How can you give this application, the permissions to be able to talk to your resources. Copilot have thought of that. So under the Copilot folder, you will you can create this add-ons folder. And within your add-ons folder, you can create a whole bunch of different YAML files. And these YAML files are cloud formation with some bits missing, shall we say. So you see, there's no um, opening section to your cloud formation. We jump straight into the parameters and these uh, add-on files will always take three parameters, the application, the environment, and the name of the service that's being deployed. This will allow you to change the names of things if you need to. And then you have the resources that you want to define. All I want to define here is an I am managed policy. It's important that this is an I am managed policy. And within this policy, you can define all of the permissions that you need. I've got read write to DynamoDB, put metrics to CloudWatch, create X-ray segments, and the SQS delete and receive. Really important point here, my SQS delete and receive is for all resources. Please don't do this in production, please. Be specific, get fangrained. I'm just demonstrating things to you, so it's absolutely okay for the moment. And importantly, when you've defined this managed policy, you need to output the ARN of that managed policy out of your CloudFormation definition. This is important because now Copilot knows that it needs to add this managed policy to the task role of the ECS task that's going to be created. Simple. So now you've got your manifest with all your configuration, you've got your add-on file with all your IAM permissions, ready to go, right? Yeah, that is all you need to do. If you come back to the actual terminal window now and run a copilot deploy command, copilot deploy will now go off and actually do the things that need to do to deploy the application. I've only got one workload and one environment at the minute, so it defaults to my API and to test. You see it's running a Docker build and you saw the, the output kind of fly through there. And then it's actually looking at the infrastructure changes that need to happen. Now, I have already run a Copilot deploy for this service just to make sure it all works before I started recording. So you'll see that there is actually no changes. There's no change to the image. There's no change to the running application. Everything is already there in AWS. Let's go and have a look. You come back to the, the, the AWS console now, and if I look at my ECS clusters, what Copilot has done is created absolutely everything you need to run this application on AWS. The networking resources, the VPC, the subnets, the load balancers, the ECS cluster, the tasks, the task definitions, the services, the list goes on. And Copilot has done all of that for you by running one single command, Copilot deploy. And Copilot's smart enough so that if I added a separate second service within this application, it knows it doesn't need to create all the other resources again. It knows they exist. It just add them to the same cluster. What is super cool is this actually supports service discovery. So, so by default, this every service deployed within this application will be able to communicate with each other using the name of the service. I can make a request to HTTP slash API from another service running within the same application. And it would work as expected. And you have the cluster. You have the cluster. The cluster has one service running within it, one task. Everything's set up and ready to go. And if I just jump over to the EC2 console now and look at my load balancers, I have one load balance here, again, that's been created by Copilot. And if I take a copy of the DNS name and hit my health endpoint, I get a response back from my application running in ECS. Now, what you've done there is you've actually compiled, deployed a container-based application on ECS using Fargate 
with all the networking resources, service discovery, IAM permissions, the lot, all using two CLI commands, one to initialize, one to deploy. It really is that easy to get started building applications. I would highly recommend taking a look at Copilot if you're building container-based applications on AWS now, or if you're interested in doing that in the future. That's all for this first video, a means just to get you started building container-based applications on AWS. Throughout this series, we're gonna talk about building event-driven applications using containers on AWS, using services like SQS, EventBridge, SNS, Step Functions, how you can leverage these managed services that are typically associated with more event-driven compute like AWS Lambda, how you can still leverage these services when you're running applications in serverless containers. I'll see you next time.